I use the scripture out of this text this morning because preciousness of the word in First Thessalonians chapter three. I'd like for us to go back there. For just a few moments, <clears throat> that runs into. How long did you preach this morning, Brother Clay? I was a little upset. <laughs> Everybody was a little bit upset. <laughs> okay. No, they're they're not saying nothing bad. <laughs> it was a good thing. That's good. Amen. <clears throat> Thank you for getting the scriptures up. First Thessalonians chapter 3. We're going to start in verse number 7. <clears throat> Had a good round in the jail today. To, got to see the, the jailer. Uh, he said, of course it, it ebbs and flows, but he said, this is a new, new guy who's been there about, I don't know, four or five weeks. And he said, you're getting more and more every time you come. <laughs> <laughs> and, and he said evidently you like the book of Luke because ever since he's been there we're going through the book of Luke we went through Matthew and Mark now we're in the book of Luke <laughs> and I said well uh, the book of Luke is wonderful to say the least but I said the, re- the reason that we're going through it is because we went through Matthew and Mark and now we're down in the book of Luke and I'll tell you what the Bible is, is such an incredible wonderful thing and what is the first of the 16 fundamentals we believe what that the blank is inspired that the scriptures are inspired yes the one true God the deity of the Lord Jesus Christ the fall of man and thank God he didn't leave us fallen there's a salvation of man woo the ordinances of the church isn't that wonderful stuff to get down in your business where you say I don't just know where I'm going. I know where I come from. <laughs> yeah. Woo. Yeah, by the power of God. Here we are in 1 Thessalonians chapter 3, verse number 7. Therefore, brethren, we are comforted over you in all our afflictions and distress by your faith. I want to show you where your faith should take you. For now we live if you stand fast in the Lord. Now, this is a, this is a really strong statement because what Paul is saying, if you don't make it, that's like we don't have life ourselves. Yeah. We want you to make it so bad because who, who wants to not just go by theirself? No. So he said, I'm willing to put my life on the line to see that you go to heaven. That, that is powerful. And, and that kind of love is, that's, that's commendable. Look at verse number nine. For what thanks can we render to God again for you for all the joy wherewith we joy for your sakes before God. So we've seen this church come up in Thessalonica and Thessalonica and he's, he's proud. He's so, he just wants to see them go forward. Verse number 10, night and day, praying exceedingly that we might see your face and might perfect that which is lacking in your faith. So we can always gain some ground. We can do better. Thank you. Now God himself and our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ direct our way unto you. And Lord, and the Lord make you to increase and abound in love one toward another and toward all men, even as we do toward you. To the end, he may establish your hearts unblameable in holiness before God, even our Father at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ with all his saints. Father, we bow in your presence. We thank you for being so alive and well. Thank you for speaking into our spirits. Thank you for your anointing. Thank you for what you did this morning in the other churches and here and Lord tonight as we get to be together. Lord, let your precious word speak and anoint and send us forward, Lord, strong in the power of your might and your love. We thank you for that in the name of Jesus. Amen. I want to talk to you out of this passage of Scripture. Verse number 12. And the Lord make you to increase and abound in love, one toward another and toward all men, even as we do towards you. I'd like to talk to you this evening about spending your time where it counts. 
Spend your time where it counts. <clears throat> and where it counts is when you can love one another. Spend your time where it counts. Growing up, I had some... Does anybody know anybody that loved you when you was growing up? Yeah. yeah. If you, if you look back, it may be mom or dad that just seemed like they just overrun with it, or, or grandmother, uh, brother, sister, whatever. But th- those, those flashes, when you, you, don't, you don't see a, a, a snarly, griping figure when you see somebody that loves you. No. Do you? you know, you're not thinking like, you know some of them too. But, <laughs> <laughs> but them that love you, just something happens. I mean, it's just like you're... Do you like that? Your arms are open. I had a, one, of, one of our Sunday school teachers, and I know being raised in church, you know, you, you, you make contact different ways. But one of, the, one of the, our Sunday school teachers, when I was like in the 10th or, or I was about 10, 11, 12, something like that, uh, her name was Sister Holly. And she, I mean, when she come in there, she was all about making sure we got the Word of God. And I, I can see her right now, a little, little bitty short girl. And probably 65 then, and I, uh, yeah, that's pretty young. <laughs> that was pretty young. Anyway, she come in, I mean, she was full, she wanted us to learn there's seven or eight of us not headed boys in there. And she did, she wasn't scared of, of she, she had the, the, what was called the canary courts. And all, all of the rough customers stayed down there, but they paid their rent. <laughs> She just talked to him right straight up, you know. I mean, it, it, she's like she mothered the whole bunch, it, the drunks and all. She, she's good to them, loved them. And that's the way she did us. She looked at us like, y'all ain't nothing. Sit down there. Be quiet. <laughs> she wouldn't want to be afraid. And so that, that kind of love and, and control was, a, I, don't, I don't know, it just touched my heart. Well, you know, I, I got out of her class after a while, went to the next class, but I never, I never forgot what she, poured, what she poured. And just her kindness, you know, her, her want to. Her, she wanted you to see it, to get a hold of it somehow. And I was about 16 and I went to the hospital and my, my appendix had ruptured. And of all the people, I mean, I hadn't been around her in several years, you know, not close contact like you are in a Sunday school class. And here comes Sister Holly. I mean, I just, she was so sweet. And she had made me a, a little uh, robe and brought me some house shoes. <laughs> I'll never forget her little purple striped robe with a little rope tied around. And she'll beat them hospital jamas or whatever them things are called. I don't know what them things were. That's wild. Anyway, <laughs> that's a good girl right there. Thank you. And when you, when you think about loving people, love marks them forever. That, you can't get away from it. If you really love people, that's known. People know that and they're just like... They migrate towards you. And if you wonder why they don't come by, it's because, oh, okay. <clears throat> so spend your time doing what? Where it counts. Love people. Now, Rebecca didn't go there to start a fight with that guy. Her heart was, Lord, if I could say something that would inspire him to take the next step. And, and that's, that's, that's the hope right there. And so when he, when he talks about it, verse number 12, is uh, the first thing he said is, uh, abound in love toward one another and so in in verse 10 he said perfect that which is lacking and if there is a lack it's love because we love ourselves but we have trouble loving other people (laughs) that's that's just scriptural he said that no man ever yet hated his own self hate his own life uh-uh. and so when you when you look at life but to love people like we love ourselves that is a uh, that's a mind-boggling supernatural only God can get it done through you but what a place to go so when he says perfect that which is lacking all of us have a lack of that sometimes we see people we just don't care for and all of a sudden Jesus shows up right then and goes I said, yes Lord I hear you Thank you. Thank you for having me step over my ignorance. Thank you for having me love that person. Thank you for having me. Yeah. And, and, and you, you cha- your whole attitude changes by the power of God. Perfect that which is lacking. In 1 John chapter 4 and verse number 20. 1 John chapter, uh, chapter 4 verse number 20. If a man say I love God and hates his brother, he is a... For he that loveth not his brother whom he hath seen, how can he love God whom he hath not seen? Wow. 
And this commandment have we from him, that he who loveth God love his brother also. The, in, the, in the jail, I learned so much, and I know Brother Ross probably could tell a jigging stories along this line. But some of those guys come in there, and I mean they're mad at the world and each other. They, they have all kinds of, of, of trouble. But one, one of the guys that, that uh, I've been visiting with the last, I don't know, about three or four weeks, young man got a little beard and just real snappy and he can read good and everything but he just don't I mean just ungodly their, their tank I mean the stuff that they, they put out on, on the little window and stuff is just well all, all of that changed over the last two or three weeks they've started pulling that stuff down and, and changed it and today I thought God nobody but you it's like we, we're our own man you know like 20, 25 or 20, 25 something like that and, and bulletproof and, and uh, I, I, I'll outlast the jail it don't matter what have you know but after three or four weeks uh, and, and get to talk to them, just love on them, being kind to them, I, I was really uh, touched today because whenever he come out, he said, can I talk to you just a second? I thought, man, I ain't no telling what he's going to say. <laughs> he just, <laughs> and uh, he said, do you ever do counseling? I said, well, yeah, sometimes. He, uh, I said, uh, but I, I can't do that right now, but I said, uh, if you can come, you know, get out and come to the church or whatever, so we might work something out like that. And I, I mean, I just he kind of caught me off guard. And so whenever I come, when I come back, I, I call him over. When we got through uh, visiting and, and praying with the guys, I said, uh, "Is there is there two or three words that you could just tell me that that would head in the direction of your problem?" He said, "Anger management." I said, there's a cure for it in the Bible. And you can start with Ephesians chapter 4, verse number 26. Be angry, but don't sin. And I said, God, if you'll take that scripture and apply it to your life, he's going to give you a way to have a controlled burn. You can be hotter than Pharaoh, but you can hold it in because God's going to help you take the step away from being crazy. So you don't have to go crazy no more if you put that scripture to flight. Be angry but don't sin. I mean that shuts the door, slams it in his face and you can have victory. And there's, there's a Bible full of, of scriptures about anger and how to deal with it. Anyway, I thought, Lord, thank you that instead of being aggravated at him, you know, and that shoving him off, that sometimes like, hey, go back, back in your tank. That the, all, all of that is a front and, and past that is a person that really needs God's touch in their life. And, and just like the, the person that Randy and Rebecca was witnessing to, if you don't, if you don't show them, they, he may never come back to them, but he's had, a, he's had some seed planted in him. Woo! And so we say, Lord, shake some water on that stuff and let it come up and start growing. Wow. So, Lord, help us to perfect that which is lacking in our, in our love relation with others. In Matthew chapter 7 and verse number 12. <clears throat> Therefore, all things whatsoever you would that men should do to you. You, you know this can come from nowhere but the Bible. <laughs> we know how to do for ourselves, but to do for others, woo! Therefore, all things whatsoever you would that men should do to you, do you even so to them, for this is the law and the prophets. Can we get better? Lord, help us to perfect that in our walk, that we can get that done the way you want it done. <clears throat> and when you think about uh, the Ten Commandments, what is the first one? Thou shalt do what? Love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, all thy soul, and all thy mind. And the last one is thou shalt not covet and the second one is thou shalt have no other gods before you <laughs> and the third one is quick cussing <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah isn't it wonderful <laughs> yeah. don't you I mean the Lord and you think about these commandments you know what they're all about these commandments is try to keep us straight between God and man the Ten Commandments. And he rolled all them up into two. He says, what? In the New Testament, he says, love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, all thy soul, and all thy mind. The second one is likened to it. Do what? Love, love your neighbor. Like you love yourself. <laughs> Woo! Man. So we're climbing that tree every day. Some people's harder to love than other ones. And I'm sure when people look at us, they're like, <laughs> That's a hard way to go. But you know what? God gives us the strength to get there. In Jeremiah chapter 7, verse number 5. Uh, 
For if you thoroughly amend your ways and your doings, if you thoroughly execute judgment between a man and his neighbor. Wow. That is a lot of message right there. And I mean, thoroughly, that's when you, you clean it up from stem to stern. There's nothing left. Connie was getting my shirts washed down, the, my white shirts down at the laundry or somewhere, anybody that's coming back. And she said, them things, the neck on them is still dirty. So she got them in there and cleaned them up. <laughs> that's thoroughly. When she got through with it and ordered it, it looked like a new shirt. It looked like one that's dingy. Come on now. If your love's got a little dingy, it's time for us, Lord, let us arm that thing out and get some. What'd you put on there anyway? <laughs> Super stuff. Uh, bleach. <laughs> Pour the bleach out. <laughs> Does our love need a little bleaching every once in a while? Lord, let us get the dingy off of it, live it out in a way. So he says, thoroughly your ways, your doings, execute judgment between a man and his neighbor. In Matthew chapter 25 and 33 Jesus didn't name a bunch of sins or a bunch of, of, of great things that people did whenever those that did go to heaven and those that didn't. He just talked about the way you dealt with people. You remember what he says in, in chapter 25? He separated the sheep from the goats. And he says, enter, you righteous, enter in to the things of the Lord. Yeah, you've been faithful over a few things, going to make you rule over many. And they said, well, Lord, what, what have we done? He said, well, I was, I was sick and you come to see me. And I was in, I was in the prison and you, you checked on me. And I was a stranger and you took me in. I was naked and you clothed me. I was hungry and you gave me food and I was thirsty and you gave me something to drink. Wow. That, all of that entails our relationship, our love to help other people to reach out to them. And even though... Sometimes it's like they don't want your help, but really they need it, you know. And so we just, we love them through the, through the storm anyway because we care. So perfecting that which is lacking, Lord, let that dig around in our spirit to where we can get where you want us to be. I, I was, uh, I want to just read you just a little story. I thought about the love relationship of our outreach to others uh, out of this book of uh, evangelism. An Assemblies of God pastor in a communist country served for four separate prison terms for preaching the gospel, leading many of his fellow prisoners to Christ. In his fourth imprisonment, he led 42 of his cellmates to Jesus, as well as two prison guards. One of them was Brother Ross. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> mm. One of the 42 was a young drug dealer. He was filled with the spirit and called to the ministry. This convert, this drug dealer, was released from the prison four months after the pastor. He journeyed to the pastor's town to attend the underground Pentecostal church. Only two weeks remained in the semester, so he could not receive credit, but he could sit in the classes there. They was having classes there at that church. The students had a one-month break. One of the requirements for entrance into the Bible school was to lead five non-believers to Christ. If you come back to school, you'll have to have five people that you won for the Lord. You got, you got, you got to love people to do that, don't you? The young man journeyed to his hometown, a communist stronghold where not one religious house of worship existed. All such buildings had been destroyed by the communists. Three weeks later, he called the pastor and asked if the pastor would come and baptize those he had led to Christ. Do you have five, the pastor asked. No, the young man replied. Then I will not come, the pastor said. It is a long train journey to your town, and until you have five converts, I will not come. The young man interrupted. Oh, no, pastor, I have more than five. The pastor did not ask how many people the young man had led to Christ. Two days later, he took the train to the young man's city and baptized 753 <laughs> believers. <laughs> Woo! The young man had not taken a personal evangelism course. He just simply shared the story of Jesus and the Holy Ghost convinced the non-believers of the message. Hallelujah. But if you don't love people, that don't happen. And sharing Jesus comes from a love relationship. Our, our world's kind of caustic about Christ, but don't give up on sharing Jesus. Man, let them... 
Let the story go out. I mean, I'm, I'm watching that guy, that jailer. Of course, he has to follow me around, you know, from every tank. So he's getting a, a, general, a general downpour of the gospel into his life. And I was so proud. He said, you know what? I like Luke too. <laughs> Lord, thank you. Instead of him being like, yeah, he's like, hey, let me, give me some of that. Isn't the word so wonderful? Loving people, perfecting that which is in our life. The, the, the next thing I want you to look at just a minute when you talk about spending your time where it counts is increase and abound in your love toward all men. It's not uncommon for us to pick and choose. Some people, like I said, are easier to love. Uh, have some, we have more things in common or something. But, you know, this thing is to the whole world. They asked me when I started preaching, is your, is your church going to be a cowboy church? And I said, never. And here's why. This gospel goes to the whole Amen. world. Amen. Whatever you are is wonderful, but what you need to be is born again. Amen. Yeah. This is not about building up one, one type of life or the other. Our hope is in Christ. Jesus, the disciples, he got a tax collector. He got a physician. He got four fishermen. I mean, he had a, a one demon-possessed man. <laughs> he give them all a chance. Can you imagine spending three and a half years and that guy carrying a purse? That's love. Because he, he waited on that guy. He was part of his ministry. There's no place in the Bible where he rebuked him except whenever he said, the poor you have with you always. Because that was just before uh, Judas nails him down, you know, and, and gives him a kiss. And even then he didn't call him out. He just said, are you going to betray the son of man with a kiss? And I mean, here's, here's the, Jesus has poured his life into him for three and a half years and he chunks that right on him. The Bible says in Psalms, my own familiar friend put me down. It didn't stop the love of God. The Lord didn't want it that way. He done everything he could to bring salvation to him, but he didn't want it. He wouldn't take it. He loved the money. And so because of that, but it didn't, it didn't stop the love of God. And it didn't stop Jesus from going to the cross and still loving people. The very ones that beat him up, what does he say? Father, would you come down here and kill these suckers? Man, they've been... Mm -mm. He said, forgive them, Lord. They don't know what they're doing. That's the kind of love that we've got to increase in and that outreach. That young man goes home and he thought, you know what? They told me I'm, I'm a dope dealer and I'm going to deal some different drugs. <laughs> I'm going to take them out there and give them some of them gospel pills. Woo! So he just tell them about Jesus and them people getting saved. Isn't that wonderful? Glory. In Jeremiah chapter 7 and verse number 6. If you oppress not the stranger, the fatherless, and the widow, and shed not innocent blood in this place, neither walk after other gods to your hurt, then will I cause you to dwell in this place in the land that I gave to your fathers forever and ever. If you're a gift to people, your gift will make room for you. People will love you and not hate you. They may hate what you're doing. I mean, if you're living for God, they may hate that. But on the inside, I say, that's... Yeah, when trouble comes, they say, I know that guy right there tell you the truth. Or that girl, she's going to be straight away. So increase and abound in your love toward all men. In James chapter 1 and verse number 27, it says that pure religion and undefiled before God and the Father is this. To visit the fatherless and the widows in their affliction and to do something else. Keep yourself what? unspotted from the world. In, so spend your time where it counts, loving others in such a way that the difference is made in their lives. In Hebrews chapter 13 and verse number 2, <clears throat> be not forgetful to entertain strangers, for thereby some have entertained angels unawares. Isn't it crazy sometimes what comes out if you know that there's no repercussion, that nobody's going to know what you said or the way you acted? Is that ever real? Somebody's going to know how you acted and what you said, aren't they? And so because of that, wherever we are, your, your Christianity needs more, to be more than 100-mile Christianity. Wherever you are, you need to be a Christian. If you're a 
in another country. Let, let the love of God and the presence of God be so vibrant in your life that people can see Christ in you and the hope that's there. So he says, don't be forgetful to entertain strangers for thereby some have entertained angels unawares. In Matthew chapter 5 and verse number 44 We had a gentleman in our church years ago. Was, uh, he's passed quite some time back, but his name was John Sanders. He, he's kind of a fun guy. We all loved him to death. And uh, anyway, we had an evangelist that was preaching for us. His name was Homer Tarkington. And I mean, he preached hell so hot and heaven so beautiful. It didn't look like nobody was going to make it. <laughs> so, so when... When Brother Sanders shook his hand, Brother Tarkington, he was like 6'5 and probably weighed 300 pounds. And he, he wasn't fat, just a huge man. He had a big old broad shoulder, big strong guy. And uh, John Sanders was a pretty big guy too. So he shook his hand and he said, Brother Tarkington, can you preach on love sometimes? <laughs> <laughs> and so Brother Tarkington, he says, well, he said, I'll tell you what, if you'll be here tomorrow night, I'll preach on love. And, <laughs> yeah, look, look at it. But I say unto you, love your enemies. <laughs> Bless them that curse you. Do good to them that, by now, yeah, are you still out there? Can you imagine? He preached his whole message right around this. <laughs> and pray for them that do what? despitefully use you and uh, persecute you. <laughs> wow. Woo! So when Brother Tarkin got through preaching that message, uh, Brother Sanders met him at the back and he said, you can preach on anything you want to. <laughs> well, love has got to be deeper than just what we enjoy. And love helps us step over the track in our life and say, you know what? We're just humans and we need God. God wants us and he wants you. Let's make this thing together. And so not, not because we're all the same, but because we all need Jesus. We've all been lost. We need to be found. We need to live our life out for Christ. Wow. And so the increase in abounding love toward man, that's a, that's a powerful thing. In Luke chapter 15, verses 1 to 10, we're not read, we won't read that, but whenever the man lost the sheep, he put the 90 and 9 in the fold. What does he do? He goes out there. He goes hunting. And he finds that sheep and brings it back. And the woman that lost the coin... She put all the other coins up and she began to sweep and mop and dig and go. she's going through the dishwasher and everything. <laughs> and the clothes dryer, she's hunting there under the bed. I don't know where she found it, but she dug around there. She wanted that back. And when you love people, you just keep praying for them, trusting God. Uh, we, we was in the cafe the other day and a guy come in, he's about, well, about half drunk. Anyway, he come over there and uh, he said, uh, I mean, he's never, never lived for God or nothing. But he came over to where we were sitting, and he said, uh, I, "I stood up and was talking to him, and he said, I, I want to thank y'all for praying for me." I, I thought, Lord, after all these years, I'm talking about 50 years, and and that's the first time I ever heard that from his mouth. And he looked over there and he said, "And I want to thank that girl right there too for for praying for our family. She 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 knew the knew him better than I did. Anyway, I thought, Lord." For 50 years for that to come out, but look at, look at the joy that, that what, what we do for Christ, it's going to pay dividends forever and ever. Woo! So increase and abound toward the thing. Spend your time where it counts. I mean, it's going to be good to stay right with God and to stay in love with people, even the, even the ones that's tough to get by. We had a, a gentleman that was working for the John Deere Company and well really he had he had his own business and John Deere bought it but they let him run that particular part of it and the the guy that was over the other uh, store he came in this this has been years ago but he got he drove up while me and my dad was in there and uh, as he was headed for the door to come in the guy that was that, that he had bought his business he said that's the only man on the face of the earth that can make me mad just getting out of the pickup <laughs> 
Don't spend your life like that. It's too short. Enjoy God. Enjoy his way. Have victory in your life. I mean, your walk can get past the trouble. When you love people, that's seen and it's going to be available. Uh, the, the next part, and in, in closing, uh, in verse number 12, back to our text in Thessalonians chapter 3, 1 Thessalonians chapter 3 and 12. And the Lord make you to increase and abound in love one toward another and toward all men. And then he talks about an, an example even as we do toward you. Now, Paul put his life on the line. He even made a living when the church couldn't support him. If they did support him, that's all right. If they didn't, he says, I've never, I, I've made my own way on purpose. I love you. I just want to make sure you get the gospel out. And I mean, he is on the front line. He said, what I'm praying is that you see how I've reached out to love you. Now you love other people like that. Man, and that's, that's what this young man saw that was reading about in this evangelism text. He saw that leader that go four times to the penitentiary in the communist country because he, he loved people. Lead 43 of those men the last time to Christ. And he said, you know what? I know what he's got. I'm going to share some of this with somebody else. Woo! And so the example, even as we do. So he's asking us to be an example like that. In 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse number 19. For though I be free from all men, yet have I made myself servant unto all, that I might gain the more. Is he getting their money? No. no. He's getting their soul. He's shooting for their soul. And unto the Jew. I became as a Jew. So he said, I know how to talk the language of the Jew. I understand them. So I, I, I can go to them. To them that are under the law as under the law. He, he understood the law of Moses. He was tutored in it. That I might gain them that are under the law. He wanted to bring them out into the righteousness of Christ. To them that are without law as without law. Being not without law to God, but under the law to Christ. So he's just saying, them that didn't know the Mosaic law, I, I, I knew how to talk to them just about Jesus. They could just, by the grace of God, they could come, be saved, born again. So he just, he just said, whatever level I needed to, to have to touch those, God help me to get there where they can find their way with Christ. To them that were without law, without law, but under the law to Christ, that I might gain them that are without law. To the weak became I as weak, that I might gain the weak. Have you ever seen a mama when she's trying to help her, her child and she's down on the floor and said, well, this is the way you do it. And they're, they're playing and, and all, all of a sudden that little is like, okay, they got it down. That's, that's, that's what we do spiritually. said, I want to help you take those first steps coming into Christ. I was looking over some of the, the material about uh, loving God and how that we start as, as children, just babes in Christ, and then we start growing. And, and we just want to get better and better at living for God instead of, you know, laying it down to the side. To the weak became I weak that I might gain the weak. I am made all things to who? To all men that I might by all means save some. Wow. That in the, in the jail, there's, there's been so many times that uh, there's people that that was very disruptive and distractive and, and I learned it. it, took me a little bit but I learned that those that's, that's uh, having the most trouble right then if you give them two or three weeks, if they stay in there that long all of a sudden there's a melting melting down and, and there's that interest, you know what, I, I, won't, I need help, I'm, I'm not totally without some help, uh, how many needs to eat every day? Amen. Yeah me too, we, maybe not until we get home again but that was good, even them strawberries, y'all didn't eat nothing strawberries did you and fresh whipping cream, <laughs> Yeah, I tried not to leave any for y'all, but there's too much for me to eat. I can get it all down. <laughs> Isn't it wonderful to share and have enough? Well, listen, there is enough of this gospel for everybody. Don't let nobody get by. Even he said, be just like we did. Become all things to all people that by all means I might save some. In 2 Corinthians chapter 8 and verse number 9. <clears throat> For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ that though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor, that ye through his poverty might be rich. When me and Connie went to the ranch, there were several hands there that couldn't speak no English. And uh, 
I got me a Bible in Spanish because I wanted them to know that Jesus, we was young, young saved. I wanted them to know the same Jesus <laughs> that we had found. And so I tried to tell them, I say, no savvy. I said, okay, I'm going to show you in, in, in your Bible. So I would look it up in my Bible and then let them read it in Spanish. And all of a sudden it's like, I understand. And to see the light come on in their heart that, that, that God to me, he loves me. He cares about me. Boy, the, the joy and the rejoicing. One of the men in the jail here a while back, he said, I, I don't understand. Uh, I don't understand English. So I said, I'm not, I'm not coming out. No, I believe the English. And I said, okay. I said, I understand just a little bit of Spanish. I was telling him, you know, my Spanish is real coarse. I mean, if you can speak Spanish, you'd look at mine and say, oh, please don't do it. But he didn't have nobody else to interpret for him but me. And so I had to go plumb back to, uh, I'm trying to figure out how to get his, his heart clean. And so when I was talking to the men, and I, the Spanish I learned, just listening to them, I'd say, okay, uh, uh, necesita limpio la canoa. And what I understood that to mean was, because I would say, ¿Cómo se llama eso? What is this? That's a canoa. That's a water trough. i say, uh, we've got to clean it up. And what, ¿Cómo se llama eso? Escova. So get your broom, sweep the water trough out. And so I'm saying, I'm saying to him, dice la Cristo, tell, tell Christ, venga la escova, bring his broom, con la sangre, with the blood, limpio la corazón. <laughs> He's like, what? <laughs> <laughs> what truck did that jump off of? I said, that come from the race world. <laughs> open your gate, open your door. Diesel like Cristo Vene. Tell Jesus, come in. And necesita dice, perdóname. Pardon me, Lord. Yo tiene lo siento. I'm sorry. You never said you're sorry. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and all of a sudden the little old lights flicker he said I can tell you don't know Spanish I don't know what you know but he said I'm going to get the water trough and sweep it out anyway I need God to help me Woo! don't we need the Lord so what we do we don't just write people and say well I didn't come to speak to you anyway. No, somehow God help us to get the gospel out to the whole world. Doesn't matter if they're young, old, rich, poor, free, or bond. Here's Jesus that left heaven for what's down here. We're all trying to get up yonder. And he comes down here and said, Que paso? <laughs> what's the matter with you? But he come because he loved us. He loved us. He loved us so much. He said, I didn't just come. I come to die for you. Whoa. And so when you interpret that kind of love into your life, all of a sudden there's an overflow that God, if you could love me like that somehow, let me have that kind of love for people. And you start spending your life where it really counts. You may not make all the money in the world, but you're going to find people that need Christ. And when you get to heaven and you get some of them coming in there with you, you're going to look around and say, Whoa, Lord, thank you. Whoa, thank you for saving them. Thank you for changing them. And what's so glorious is that they find, if, you're, if you tell them, they're going to tell somebody. Amen. Yeah. You tell me where the best eating place is in Steiner, I'm going to try it. It may not be good for me, but I'm sure good. Nah. I, and if it's good, I'll tell somebody else it's okay. <laughs> yes, woo, that's some good stuff. What about talking about this Jesus man in such a way that people say, "Come and tell me, you're telling hombre, I'm hungry." <laughs> Took me a long time to get the difference between hombre and hombre. <laughs> One of them's man and one of them's hunger. <laughs> I may have them backwards, but anyway, I was working on it all the time. <laughs> they, they started talking Mextex to me, you know. We'd, we'd go by the store. It was about, I don't know, 12 miles to the store. We'd go by the store and we'd be three, uh, four, three of them and me in a, in a pickup, you know. And a just, I'm not, this is not double cap, either. this is a single cap. <laughs> We got stacked in there. We go out this little old store, little country store there, and they, and they say, hey, Kenny Brick. Because <laughs> we talked about breakfast. <laughs> you know, Kenny Brick, Kenny Brick. I said, okay. So we'd go in there and get some sweet rolls or something. Yeah. Of course, I didn't like them, you know, but they did. They, you know how they. <laughs> 
Yeah, you know I'm not telling the truth now, don't you? Well, but what happens when you love people? All of a sudden, there's this, there's not you and them, it's us. We're in this together and we've all been lost and we've all been down to hell and Jesus come and ran interference for us and said, I love you so much, I'm willing to die for you. Woo! And then he says, you fall in love with people like I fell in love with you. And here, here's the scripture. That though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor. That ye through his poverty might be rich. Woo! So I beg him. What days you have left on the face of this earth. Spend your time where it counts. Spend your time loving people. And watch God use you to win others to Christ. Woo! Would you stand with us this evening to come around these altars and say, Lord, we're coming to do it your way. Hallelujah.